to start us off, can you provide your high level perspective on the aspects of these bills that you see as most relevant to um, local decision makers and utilities? Yeah, so it's a great question because there are a lot of moving parts right now. Um, and, and each of those parts I think is really significant. The HEROES Act uh, was passed actually 100 days ago yesterday. Uh, and it's big, uh, $3.5 billion, trillion dollars, sorry. I mean, when we're talking numbers that big, sometimes you forget to use the T. Yeah, it's $3.5 trillion. And uh, it not only attempts to address the public health crisis and the pandemic uh, in, in really important ways by getting uh, to, the, to the end of this, this uh, dysfunction we see with testing and with the stockpiling of PPEs and other things, uh, but it also critically provides relief to state and local governments to the tune of about a trillion dollars and um, does a lot more than that, postal service and other pieces, hunger, nutrition assistance. Um, we knew 100 days ago that we were going to need something uh, of this magnitude to truly respond to what was coming. And I think our problem is for 100 days, uh, it's really been the sound of one hand clapping. Uh, we finally had our Republican colleagues come back to us with some half measures that don't even begin to approach the problem. Uh, they include nothing for state and local governments. So uh, we're a long way from a deal. Uh, and in fact, even on the unemployment insurance, which sort of politically was the most compelling thing that was you would think would move people to the table, the loss of that additional $600 weekly benefit, um, they don't seem to be particularly motivated. So uh, I wish I had better news for you, but at least that part of uh, all of these legislative responses seems uh, pretty far from, from a deal. Uh, in the meantime, uh, that huge $3.5 trillion package that we passed out of the House, we knew that even that wasn't really enough to respond to the economic downturn and the other challenge that we're gonna see from this pandemic. And so um, this was an important sort of forcing moment for us. As long as I've been in Congress, we've been talking about infrastructure. Uh, everybody says they want to do infrastructure. I've lost count of how many times President Trump declared infrastructure week, uh, but nothing ever comes of it. Everyone could always find reasons not to move the bill forward to an actual vote. Well, we finally did move a really big and bold infrastructure bill to a vote on the floor of the House of Representatives and we passed it. The core of it, what, this is the Moving Forward Act, the core of it was a surface transportation reauthorization and uh, you know that we're just a, a couple months, a month away from uh, the current surface transportation authorization expiring. So this is timely, uh, but we added a whole bunch of other really robust investments to that, including uh, my Future Drought Act, which thank you, Water Now has been very supportive. Many of your participants have been very supportive, but a big water infrastructure piece in the Moving Forward Act. Uh, also, you know, clean vehicles for our postal service, broadband, all sorts of other components to the infrastructure fix. Um, and, and I just included in that my mention of the Future Act, which you had asked about. So that is my water infrastructure answer. We can talk a little more about that when you want. And then the last piece of all these moving parts to, to try to track, and it's, it's a little dizzying, is WERDA, the Water Resource Development Act. That's, of course, the, the piece of water that lives with the Army Corps of Engineers. And um, you know, this is a bill that does manage, even in today's politics, to, to get done somehow every couple of years. And we are on track, I think, to do that again. Uh, we've passed a, a really good word out of the house. I think it can get over the finish line, uh, even in uh, these dysfunctional politics that we're living through. But uh, that's sort of the mix of bills. Add on to that now, the layer of appropriation season, because uh, as you know, the fiscal year for our federal government starts October 1. That means the clock is ticking on getting all of these agencies funded through the appropriations bills. We've been dutifully passing most of them out of the house but um, there hasn't been a lot of action in the Senate. And uh, we are heading to one of those great impasses that have become sort of the, the norm uh, these days. Whether that will result in you know, a big omnibus or some kind of a flatline continuing resolution of current funding or something in between, sometimes we call them mini buses where you'll take a, a cluster of agencies and, and cut a deal on funding for them and then kind of a continuing resolution flatline for other agencies. I have no idea 
the politics are fascinating uh, right now, and, and that's probably a euphemism because it's really uh, quite frustrating and dysfunctional. But uh, that, that, that's a long answer to your first question, Cynthia. It was perfect. I think everybody was really hungering for that kind of overview. So thank you for that.